Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times horror movies tackled serious issues. Death to Videodrome. Long live the new flesh. The ones with the virus, man. That is like the crazy. Did any of you ever stop to think that Carrie White has feelings? Do any of you ever stop to think? For this list, we're looking at films that offered more than a series of fun thrills and chills. Horror films offer a chance to explore subversion, taboo, or socially important messages in a way that strikes a deep chord with the audience. As much as possible, we've selected films that are upfront about the issue they are addressing. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. The Crazies – Biowarfare This George A. Romero film opens with a startling scene that sets an unnerving tone. What's the matter, Billy? What's the matter, Billy? It is discovered that a military plane containing a bioweapon that makes people murderously insane crash-landed near the town days earlier. The town is forced into quarantine, and the military takes all control of civilian functions. In their efforts to contain the virus, however, they overreach their powers and execute citizens who disobey. Given recent events, most of us know of quarantine measures firsthand, but this film presents a nightmare scenario by which the security measures turn as deadly as the sickness. <laughs> Number 9. Videodrome – Adult Entertainment and Violence In this classic of Canadian horror cinema, the CEO of a small TV station discovers a secret channel that broadcasts violence and sex. As he searches for the source, he becomes increasingly disconnected from reality in bizarre and terrifying ways. You'll forgive me if I don't stay around to watch. I just can't cope with the freaky stuff. By use of body horror and surreal storytelling, Videodrome touches on fears that were growing in the 80s and still exist today. Video what? D-R-O-M-E. Videodrome, like you know, video circus, video arena. You know it? No. It's just torture and murder. No plot, no characters. Very, very realistic. The intoxicating pull of technology, our fascination with violence, erotic fixations, and how far is too far when it comes to the way we interact with media are as timely now as they were for the VHS generation. Exciting. Very lively. Careful. It bites. Number 8. Invasion of the Body Snatchers – Red Scare slash Paranoia what if your all-American neighbour isn't quite what they seem to be? <laughs> Losing one's identity to a soulless collective remains a key scare tactic slash talking point when it comes to anti-communism slash socialism rhetoric. This hive mind is taken to extremes in Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I don't want any part of it. You're forgetting something, Miles. What's that? You have no choice. In the 1970s remake, the paranoid idea that a greater power wants to strip you of your individuality returns. Similar to themes in John Carpenter's The Thing, the idea that a person's very humanity, and then that of an entire society, can be taken away practically overnight, hasn't lost relevance in today's world. You fools! You're in danger! Can't you see? They're after you! They're after all of us! Number 7. They Live – Capitalism A drifter becomes embroiled in a rebel operation to save humanity when it's discovered that people across the globe are being directed into rampant consumerism and obedience via secret signals. Whee! 
In the 80s, a decade defined by excess and consumption, the film's anti-capitalist message was loud and clear. Marketing is brainwashing you. Those in power are exploiting you. Poor and the underclass are growing. Racial justice and human rights are non-existent. They have created a repressive society, and we are their unwitting accomplices. The director, John Carpenter, was becoming increasingly repulsed by Reaganomics and the unrestrained consumerism and greed of the 80s. Everything was, and still is, for sale. You see, I take these glasses off, she looks like a regular person, doesn't she, huh? Put them back on, from Malvahide face, that's what that's we got. The film remains relevant, thought-provoking, and thoroughly enjoyable. Number six, Carrie, tormenting others. Creepy Carrie, creepy Carrie! <laughs> Despite the explosive ending of Carrie, folks who call the titular telepath a villain are few and far between. In the lead up to the infamous prom, we follow Carrie White from school, where she is tormented by schoolmates, to home, where she is repeatedly traumatized by her religious fanatic mother. He was weak. <gasps> Say it. No, Mama. He was weak. No. He was weak. No. He was weak. Say it. No, Mama. Mama. Say it. He was weak. He was weak. Sweet and shy, she is a target because of her innocence and low self-esteem. That she is secretly powerful is poetic revenge. <laughs> Most victims don't have superpowers in their back pocket. Mistreating others in school and the workplace can lead to years of PTSD, or worse. While the behaviour is taken more seriously now than in the 70s, it is still a huge problem. Number 5. The People Under the Stairs – Income Inequality Upstairs and down have been used in more than one property to denote a separation of wealth, from Downton Abbey to Parasite to, um, upstairs, downstairs. I don't know what's under discussion in the dining room, but every time we knock, the silence is so thick you could stuff a cushion with it. As horrifying as it may seem, the plot of this cult classic from horror master Wes Craven was in part taken from real life, when burglars in LA made a disturbing discovery in the house they were attempting to rob. <laughs> The Robesons, seen by many as sly stand-ins for the Reagans, are a gross depiction of the ideal suburban couple, when behind the white picket fence that separates them from the hoi polloi, a darker, more insidious barrier is kept. May they burn in hell. Forever and ever in hell. Number four, Candyman. Intergenerational racism. Candyman, 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 Candyman. Candyman. The vengeful ghost Candyman was once the artist Daniel Robitaille, who was born of a slave in the 1800s. After falling in love with a white woman and fathering her child, he was disfigured and then murdered by an angry mob. See? How I became the reflection of their hatred. Their evil. His soul lived on while his body was burned on the future site of the Cabrini Green housing project. The separation of privilege is stark. To this day, people of colour fight for equality and respect under the law, with too many horrendous recent examples of modern lynchings. Candyman is a reminder that if we don't own up to the violent past, there can be no peaceful future. I am the writing on the wall, the whisper in the classroom. Without these things, I am nothing. So now, I must shed innocent blood. Number three, The Babadook, Mental Illness. <laughs> As a widow struggles to take care of her son, her grief begins to manifest into a dark and dangerous creature, the Babadook. <laughs> Exhausted and isolated, her life is slowly taken over by the Babadook. It's a powerful film, showing how various forms of mental illness, when unaddressed, can leave the sufferer feeling helpless and at the mercy of a monster. 
The poignant ending, which embraces the courage it takes to face your monsters and manage them without shame in the best way you can, offers hope rather than a cheap or simple solution. This is my house! You are trespassing in my house! Number two, The Stepford Wives, Women's Rights. I like to watch women doing little domestic chores. You came to the right town. A woman's right to her body and agency in her daily affairs are cornerstone principles when it comes to women's rights. In this cult horror satire based on the novel of the same name by Ira Levin, author of Rosemary's Baby, which deals with similar themes, a woman's right to her body and mind are at the forefront. There'll be somebody with my name and she'll cook and clean like crazy, but she won't take pictures and she won't be me. In the town of Stepford, the wives are perfect, too perfect, cookie-cutter fantasies for the men of the town. The film shows that an individual forced into an idealised fantasy role is robbed of the very things that make them human. In this case, literally. I thought we were friends. I thought we were friends. I thought we were friends. How could you do a thing like that? I thought we were friends. The name Stepford has become synonymous with automaton robotic behaviours straight from the uncanny valley. Why? Why? Because we can. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Society. Class. You're a different race from us, a different species, a different class. You're not one of us. You have to be born in the society. Dawn of the Dead. Consumerism. What are they doing? Why do they come here? Some kind of instinct, memory, what they used to do. This was an important place in their lives. Scream 4. Internet fame. Trevor Sheldon denied live on Hall Pass with Robbie Mercer. What is your favorite scary movie, man? I'll show you. <laughs> it follows. Sex. This thing. It's gonna follow you. Somebody gave it to me, and I passed it to you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, get out. Racism. Get out. Sorry, man. Okay. Get out! Yo! 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 Chill, man. Get out! Chill! Get out! Chill! Jordan Peele's directorial debut was a sensation. Released amid continued protests for the rights of black people and the problems daily faced by people of colour, few horror films have been as timely as they are poignant. I can't move. You can't move. Why can't I move? You're paralyzed. Just like that day when you did nothing. You did nothing. The sunken place where the abducted victims of the Armitage family find themselves prisoner brought Peel to tears as he wrote the scenes upon realizing what it represented for African Americans trapped by the apparatus of white supremacy and the prison industrial system in the United States. Strokes both broad and subtle, Get Out is as evocative as it is terrifying. Come on, bro. Yo! Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here. Double time switching lanes. Bad man blood like a hurricane. Jano that I feel the pain. Baptize and testify in the pouring rain.